Hi guys, so in today's video we're going to be looking at putting epoxy primer on this camper. Now the camper is a mixture of bare metal areas as you can see there. So we've got quite a few bare metal areas where we've had to bare metal stuff and where we've done welding work. And also a lot of areas where we've sanded the old paint off, sanded problem areas out of the paint and obviously again like this section here. Um, but there's a lot of bare metal patches, there's a lot of paint edges. I want to put some epoxy primer on this to get everything sealed up and seal everything off from the work that we want to do over the top. Now bodywork wise it's not actually too bad. It is going to need some filler work but not a massive amount. So the plan is to give this two really good coats of epoxy, give it a bake through, let it have a really nice cure over the long weekend because we've got a bank holiday weekend so that next week we can start doing the filler work and then we'll do the high build and then obviously the final prep ready for paint. So we've got everything masked out, the van's all masked out in one piece, the roof, everything, just to make life a little bit easier. Um, we're going to be using the Mipa epoxy primer for this. I will pop a little picture of the primer up that we're using here so you guys can see what we're using. And yeah, that's about it really. So I'm going to go and get some mixed up and then I will talk you through what we're doing. Um, why we're doing it and the sort of process and the reasons behind doing what we're doing on this van. So spray gun wise I'm going to be using my Segola 3300 GTO it's got the 1.8 setup on it and I was also I think using the Evo air cap on it. Now this mixes up as a 2 to 1 product it's quite thick so you do need to make sure that you've got a decent primer gun or you can optionally buy the optional epoxy thinners for this and then add up to 10% epoxy thinners to it. Now I didn't want to add thinners because I basically wanted to get on most parts one really good sealing coat all over this van to seal everything down. Now by sealing everything down I mean anything whether it be old paint, whether it be like this fiberglass roof or whether it be the bare metal of the actual van itself. Now the beauty of this is it can go over all substrates as long as obviously they are prepped upright. As you can see with this roof, this has been heavily taken back um, as well as quite a lot of other areas on this van where there was a lot of issues with paint on it. Um, some from previous paint work that's been done and some from a little bit of the older paint work on the van. But in some areas like this where it was actually quite recent paint work that was the issue um, it was just a lot quicker to use a rotary, day, uh, rotary DA um, with something like a 40 on it and just rip all the paint back off and tear it back to bare metal and start off with a good clean substrate to work up from again. But obviously there's then a lot of issues. Now you could go down the route of etch prime in those areas and then we could use high build. But as you can see on the side there, there's so many different layers of paints. Um, we needed something that was more neutral that could seal it all down. There may be possibly in the past have been some like old, not so modern um, technology 2 pack on it. There may have been a tiny bit of cellulose in a few areas. There was issues in a few areas with paint peeling and paint bubbling and for you guys that have seen on Instagram you will have seen some of the shots of that that we showed where around the back end we could blow some of this blue paint off the bottom just with the airline. Um, so we did what the van needed all over. Now, our customer is not looking for a concourse van. It's basically we've got a budget to stick to and we're just trying to make this the best we can within that budget, but also make it last. So for me, using something like epoxy to seal this whole van up with now and also get all this bare metal that's nicely sort of bright and all the rust's been treated, everything's already been done. You know, we've done a lot of welding work and stuff like that. We've done the lead work around the front that you'll have seen in a previous video. Um, we wanted to get this epoxy layer. Basically, it was almost like a neutral layer to seal everything off. Because most of the other paints <coughs> on this van may be more like the conventional polyester based. Or there may be some slightly cellulose based stuff on here. So using something like epoxy will give a barrier between... All the different paint layers, the bare metal and the old paintwork and everything and leave us with a fresh blank canvas to work to. On top of that it will also give me a little bit of build and also a little bit of a guide to where the damaged areas are on the van which in a future video I will go I will take this from 
you know its baked state after we've epoxied it and show you how I'd go about on such a big area like this of breaking it down so that we can get the repair work done without missing any of the repair work so epoxy like this is ideal to use as a sealer over say our normal polyester high build because again it's a neutral product in the realms of what we're using you know most products are like polyester based um, this in particular obviously is epoxy based so the chance of it reacting with anything that's already on the van is very very slim and the chances of anything we put in over the top of it reacting as well is going to be a very very slim chance now epoxy or I'd say probably 99% of epoxies are also um, non-porous so we could wet sand this if it got wet it wouldn't soak into it you know there's all these things that we can take into account of why epoxy would be better on a job like this uh, to use as a sealer to basically give us a blank canvas to work from without having to bare metal the whole van because you know the amount of time it would take us to bare metal this and the things that we could uncover you know it could turn the job from being something that we can afford to do for the customer to something that's just going to be hundreds and hundreds of hours because you're never going to know what is underneath all that old paint so hence on the back end of the van i had bare metal the roof and on the front of the van i haven't bare metal the roof we've just bare metal some areas and then sanded all the front of the roof down now the issues on the front of the roof were just very minor like just bad paint work really um Whereas around the back end, there was a lot of bubbling in the paint, so that paint had to come back off. Now, this has been left to dry out for quite some time now. It's been kept under the cover. It's also been through a few bake cycles to try and cook all the paint issues out. So it's had a lot of hot and cold cycles, you know, to make sure that everything is as good as we can before we put this epoxy down. And as soon as this epoxy is dried after the bank holiday weekend, then I'll be getting straight on to some of the body repairs and trying to get this thing smoothed out, cleaned up and prepped up, ready to do some paintwork. Which is again, like around these edges here, I'm not going all the way into the door jams with this epoxy because the inside of the door jams aren't actually too bad. The finish on them's not good at all, but that can be sanded down and prepped up for when we put the final primer coat on. I just want to get all this bare metal sealed up um, and basically stop everything from rusting and get a blank seal over the complete van that we can then work up from as far as bodywork goes and obviously while this bare metal is sat there it will oxidize whether it is in a dry workshop or not there is still moisture in the air so even if it's just sat there it can still start to oxidize and rust on you so different areas of this van have been bare metaled at different times so when we brought it into the booth and masked it up we went around everything with an angle grinder and the rotary wire brush on a drill again just to make sure that any areas that were bare metaled like inside the light bulbs this bumper bar at the front which was absolutely horrendous it was covered in stone chip and a, probably about 10 different types of paint so <coughs> So because of just how bad that was and the different paint types, we just decided to just rip that back off to bare metal. The inside of the light bulbs were also really bad, but the condition of them after being bare metaled was really nice. And the same for in this vent all here. It looked horrendous, but once it had been bare metaled, it was really nice and clean. So on some of these areas, all we're really going to need to do is just sand the epoxy down and put high build over them. Obviously inside that vent I don't need to mess around with filler work but now it looks clean and as it should originally. The same inside the light bulbs and also the bumper bar. I'm not really going to have to touch those areas so bare metal in them may have taken a little bit more time but it was a lot more worth it. Now I have sped part of this footage up or you would be sitting here watching me spray this for about an hour. Um, this Mipa epoxy, I have to say, it's the first time I'd used it. Um, I asked around in the groups. Um, a few people recommended the Novel epoxy sealer. But the issue was I just couldn't get hold of that in a big enough quantity. I could only buy it in like 0.8 litre pots. Um, whereas this, I got a big 7.5 litre kit for doing this van with. Because I want to do the exterior of the panels as well. Plus, unlike some of the epoxies from what I've read on the data sheet you can actually overpaint over this epoxy primer if you sand it down 
Um, there is also wet and wet options. So if you wanted to put a full seal coat on this van like this, you could bake it at 60 degrees for 30 minutes, let the van cool down and then come straight in wet on wet and put primer on this if you really wanted to. So for some jobs like I've got a mini in at the moment, this stuff will be ideal for sealing that old paint on the mini and also the bare metal areas again and then coming in 30 minutes, 40 minutes later and then lobbing a lot of high build on there so I can block it all out ready for paint. But obviously on a, something like this, it's just basically being used to give me a fresh canvas to work from. Um, and I did try blocking some of it out and doing a little bit of work on the rear end. It was nice stuff to block out, it dried through really well. It sprayed very well through the Segola um, with the 1.8. I was running it at around about, I'd probably say three quarters fan. I was running it at two bar of air pressure and I just let it go at full fluid so I could get a really nice thick coat. Now, the way that I went around this was just to give all the areas one full wet coat and then I mixed another couple of pots up and went around all these areas where I knew it had been bare metal and put an extra coat over all those. Now I've, as I've said, I've been sanding on this today and that one coat was actually, took quite a while to break through. So if you were doing something like a classic car or you know this was a concourse job, if you put a couple of coats on there, because this is not just a sealer, it is like a filler epoxy sealer, so there is quite a lot of build to this, then you could really make a big difference to the amount that you're going to have to put in, you know, with something like, say, high build primer. But with being epoxy, you're going to get a much better seal on all the paints, and it's just going to give you a better ground coat to work from, really. So I switched the camera around here to give you guys a bit of a different view of me painting, because normally you've got a point of view as I see it, but I just thought I'd give you guys a little idea of what it looks like when I don't have a camera on my head and the camera's in the corner of the booth instead. Plus, doing this little bit of time lapse here, it'll just stop the video getting a little bit too long for you guys. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this little bit of a video on this van and the reasons why that I went for a epoxy sealer on this as opposed to a normal high build primer. Um, high build primers could still react or the normal high build primer that we use could still react with anything cellulose or any of these little paint edges or anything like that. You could still get issues on those sort of areas. And that's what the one thing with this van that I didn't want. I wanted to seal this up with a real big fresh coat and then be able to come at it a couple of days later and start smashing into all the belly repairs. So that's all the epoxy down. All the vans now had two full coats from the rails down and a full heavy coat on the roof. So all anything that's bare metal has had at least two full coats of this epoxy. It, I have to say it lays down really nice. The coverage on it is really good as well. As you can see, it now looks like a completely different van. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the first stage of the paint and the repair process on this van. Um, I will leave a link in the description to the lead loading video that we did on the window lit at the front and also the Raptor video that we did on the interior. Then if you want, you guys can take a look at that and I'll see you again in a future video when we'll go through my stages for how I'll go about bodywork in this, how I'll work about what needs bodywork and go through it basically the way that I find the easiest is to mark everything up and do it panel by panel, but I'll, I'll go through in a separate video and show you guys how we're going to do that and how we're going to take this from epoxy into primer and then into paint. So I'll, that's it for today's video guys and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.